News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. It's sad. It's, we're in 2024, uh, and uh, the Upper West Side of New York City, uh, Jews are told by their rabbi or suggested that they should leave because it's unsafe. And these are not protesters. These are violent hate mongers. The things that are coming out of their mouth burn down Tel Aviv, ge- Tel Aviv genocide. We, October 7th, we did it once. We'll do it 10 times. We'll do it 100 times. We'll do it 1,000 times. We'll do it 10,000 times. Um, this is an atrocity. And I'm going to say the quiet part out loud. If there was any group spewing hate and violence against any other group, Asians, blacks, Hispanics, gays, it would be shut down. And this needs to be shut down immediately because... Because, and once again, those groups are back. Those tents are back up. And this cannot go unanswered. It's very simple. And, you know, there's a continuum of protesters. There's a heinous anti-violent ones that spewing hatred, spewing death, if you will. And then there's the less malignant that say ceasefire. But even, even ceasefire doesn't have the word peace in it. Never do you hear the word peace because this side doesn't want peace. It wants a jihad. And this is not pro-Palestinian. This is anti-Israel. And anti-Israel is a misnomer because it's really anti-Jew. And it makes me sick and it's terrifying. Okay, that's Donnie Deutsch uh, from, uh, I think, uh, CNBC last time I checked. And I want to talk to you about this a little bit more at 800-288-WBAP, 800-288-9227. Do you consider these protests at Columbia, Yale, uh, Harvard, uh, MIT now? It's kind of spreading everywhere. Uh, do you consider them to be pro-Hamas and pro-terrorist? Do you feel this raw? This is raw Jew hatred like I do and that we're back in the 1930s again, except for this time the Germans are uh, younger students on our elite campuses? I sure do. And what do you think about this? I, I, one of the things I think about is that they pro, uh, freedom of speech is one thing, but this is a material support of, uh, of a terrorist praising Hamas, saying Hamas, your next target needs to be these Jews right here with an arrow on a sign. It's on my Twitter feed. I, it's, uh, I just retweeted it tonight. Uh, follow me on Twitter at Chris Croc Show. That's at Chris Croc Show. And then you have uh, this uh, chant that was being said at Columbia, F Israel, Israel, a B word, B word. We out here mobbing on some Palestine S word, free Palestine B word. Israel going to die B word N word. It's they land. Why you out here trying to rob it? BS prophets. Y'all just want the profit, uh, which that in itself is anti-Semitic saying, you're, you know, all the Jews want is money. Now, think of it this way. One more thing from this columnist, uh, Barry Weiss today in the in the free press. And then I want to take your call, uh, John and Ulysses, in just one second. 800-288-WBAP. That's 800-288-9227. Can you imagine Muslim students during Ramadan being told they have to go home because they can't guarantee their safety? Could you imagine that happening to Muslim students? Ramadan, sorry guys, you got to go home. Did you you do know that the uh, uh, the uh, or, or Orthodox rabbi, ultra Orthodox rabbi, whatever you want to call him, uh, on campus at Columbia told the Jews to go home. You can you're not safe here. You need to go home. He says it pains me to say that, but you need to go home. Could you imagine Muslim students being told that during Ramadan? You have to leave. Uh, do you remember when Charlottesville, Virginia, happened and they were chanting, "The Jews will not replace us"? This is the same thing. But it's on Jews. And nobody's calling it out. I mean, so is the one in Charlottesville. But do you hear anybody calling this out? Like Charlottesville? At Columbia and Yale, they're yelling, go back to Poland. Saying, uh, cheering Hamas. We are Hamas. I played you that. I'll play it again if you'd like to hear it again. And I think about what happened on October 7th and how that begot... So much anti-Semitism. It's unbelievable. The Jews are killed, raped, kidnapped, beheaded, uh, uh, generally mutilated, sexually tortured and and tortured uh, and and raped repeatedly in captivity, according to the UN, as they were kidnapped. And they're the ones getting attacked. And they're the ones getting. They, it's like they, they're, they're. It's like these uh, Jew haters and pro-terrorist people are mad that the Jews aren't dying enough. It's as if they're saying, "How dare you be alive still?" They're enraged by them being alive. Look what they want. They want a, uh, a Columbia University free of Jews. You know that? 
They want a Yale free of Jews. They want a Harvard free of Jews. And they're saying they want Israel to be wiped out from the river to the sea. So this is calling for the total annihilation and extinction of every Jew. And our president, it says right here from Fox News, White House mom on whether Biden would send National Guard to Columbia University. Why has he not sent the National Guard to Columbia University? I'll tell you why I think he hasn't sent it, because those are his Biden voters he wants to get back. He can't win without them in Michigan. I want to tell you something else. What do you think is going to happen to the DNC this summer? Man, DNC Chicago, 68, I think it was. My dad was a cop then. Your stories I hear? Are you kidding me? Riots upon riots upon riots. This is going to be worse. You know that, right? This mob's coming for the Democrats in at the DNC this summer in Chicago, my hometown. You know that. This is nothing what we're seeing now. Wait till you see that. They're not... Standing up to these people, I think if they want to protest and support terrorism, they must be exposed. I, I don't think you can support material uh, terrorism, material support terrorism. They're calling for Hamas. They say, we are Hamas. Hamas, get these people. Burn a Tel Aviv to the ground. Is that freedom of speech to you? It doesn't seem like it to me. It seems like terrorism. At the very least, we should know every person that's saying this publicly so that the school can kick them out and put it on their permanent record and I want to know who they are so that everybody can know who they are, like StopAntiSemitism.com does. I retweet them all the time uh, to share with you because none of these people should ever be hidden from any potential employers or any schools because they need to know who they are. And if you want to have a terrorist working at your dental facility, your doctor's office, your hospital, or to be a student in your university, then so be it. But this does not seem like free speech to me. Does it seem like free speech to you? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. And do you consider these protests to be pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist? And do you feel this is raw Jew hatred, like we're back in the 30s again, only the, the Germans are our students on these campuses? Let's go to Ken, or excuse me, John in Euless. John, you're on 820 AM and now 93.3 FM, WBAP. Thank you. I'm really appalled at these illustrious colleges like MIT, Yale, Harvard. <laughs> it's crazy, and especially Columbia. Where's the lawyers referring uh, issues like this uh, or, or advising the college people, hey, these people need to register if they're going to demonstrate, and they can't demonstrate uh, um, if they're going to disrupt the normal activities of the students in the faculty, if they're going to stop faculty from coming to their desk in the mornings, etc. There should be noise abatement rules on college. Let okay. me give you an example. Uh-huh. I'm a private individual. Let's say I'm pissed off at the college, so I'm going to drive over there and demonstrate and blow my horn and drive all over the camp- campus and disrupt anything and everything by blowing my horn on my car all day. Do you think they wouldn't arrest me? They would. They would arrest me. Because they because can't, I'm, right, you're, you're disturbing the, their uh, their commerce, their business, you're disturbing the peace. They can't, people can't live their lives in peace. Simple. So the colleges are complicit in not providing a safe place for their students. That's who exactly right. Money. And that's and why Elise Stepanek is saying that uh, the 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 uh, head of uh, Emma of uh, Columbia needs to needs to be uh, terminated. She needs to step down. And I agree, she is not making it safe for the Jews and that campus. Do you know that they can't even in the middle of the night they can't sleep because they have terrorists outside of their dorms yelling uh, in the in, in the courtyards and stuff. They can't freaking sleep because people are calling for their death and their rape. Yes, they can't sleep because they're hearing people call for their ra- rape and their death. I mean, what the hell is this? What this is? How is this not World War II again? And it's happening. Yes, um, I appreciate your call. I mean, I'm just sitting here because I'm hearing them tell us this every day, and the only I'm not hearing this much at all on uh, on uh, on the other news outlets that I'm aware of. I'm, I'm seeing it on Fox News every day. They're interviewing these students. Do you, I mean, do you know what it's like to be a Jew and to be told you can no longer go to this college? You're not safe in America. This is not Somalia. This is not Africa. This isn't Afghanistan. All right. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number. All right. Coming up next, uh, can't wait to get into this one with you. It'll be a nice breath of fresh air after what we just went through there. Um, But would you marry your spouse today? All these years later, all these years later, 20, 30, whatever it is for you, or 15, 20 years, would you marry your spouse again today? 
A brand new survey reveals some uplifting and yet alarming insights. Would you marry your spouse today? We'll talk about that. Why or why not? No criticisms. Criticism, ugh, no criticisms here for me. Be honest. We'll just uh, we'll take it as it is. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. On News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. News Talk 820 WBAP now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. Hey, would um, talking about the protests, the uh, Jew-hating, open, raw Jew hatred in our universities, our elite ones, uh, and all of our streets today. Uh, do you consider these protesters to be pro-Hamas, pro-terrorist? Do you feel this is raw Jew hatred like we're back in the 30s again, only this time the Germans are here in America, as I do? And don't you think it's only fair that, number one, we know who these folks are that are protesting, that are pro-Hamas. And don't you think it at some point becomes illegal because you're supporting and and calling for terrorists to strike? I mean, how could you possibly think this is freedom of speech? Do you? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. David in Waxahachie, you're on News Talk. I should say you're on 820 AM and now 93.3 FM WBAP. Hey, David. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, what you're talking about uh, reminds me of something I read in history. It's uh, 1938. It was the uh, night of broken glass. Mm. When people ramaged the uh, uh, Jewish neighborhoods mm-hmm. and broke all the glass in their uh, stores and stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's Kristallnacht, of- right? The night of broken gl- glass, Kristallnacht. Yes, it was. I'm, I'm, you know, that's. Uh, I'm glad you said that. Well, let me read it to you uh, from the Holocaust Memorial Museum uh, on November 9th to the 10th, 1938. Nazi leaders unleashed a series of pogroms against the Jewish population in Germany and recently incorporated territories. This event became known uh, to be called Kristallnacht, the night of broken glass, because of the shattered glass that littered the streets after the vandalism and destruction of Jewish-owned businesses, synagogues, and homes. You have Jews walking by these protests going to class, not wearing a yarmulke, not having an Israeli flag or anything, and they're, they're being yelled at. I, they say his name. They know what class he's going to. They know who he is. They know he's a Jew. It's here. It's here. So what do we do, David? I mean, um, is this freedom of speech? Uh, no. It's uh, completely and totally against the law. Do you have to be a Jew to feel this way? No, I'm a Christian. So am I, and I don't. And the next time, yeah, I reject this. After us. I reject this. And what's that? They're coming after us also. Yes. That's why we must stand together against this, all of us, you know, atheist, Christian, Jew, anyone. This is uh, nothing but raw hatred and uh, a desire to extinguish the Jewish population and subjugate anybody who does not go to their will. This is terrorism. You know, the definition of terrorism isn't just radical Islamists, although they're supporting open terrorism with radical Islamists that slaughter, kill, and kidnap and rape Jews. But um, terrorism is is uh, threatening violence or vi- or committing violence in order to achieve a political means, a political uh, uh, outcome, political desire. So that's what this is, and this is terrorism. It's Marxism, and it's uh, it's Marxism and it's godlessness is what it is. David, I appreciate your call. Kevin and Argyle, you're on uh, 820 AM and now 93.3 FM WBAP. Hi, Kevin. Hey, Chris. Hey, Chris. Appreciate your show. Look, man, I just want to comment on whether or not I would remarry my spouse. Yes. I'll tell you, man, I would marry her again in a heartbeat if she'd have me. Well, look at this nice segue. Go ahead. Hey, man, she loves the Lord with all her heart. She's a servant leader for our family, an amazing wife, an amazing mother, and she always puts others before herself. I would marry her again a thousand times over. How long have you been married? We've been, we're just going to be 25 years uh, this summer. Congratulations. For me, it'll be uh, in June 24, uh, which is quite amazing. I mean, that's un- yeah. that's unbelievable. We're getting old. Kevin. We are. <laughs> uh, hopefully we have a partner to grow old with. So very uh, Yes, and I want to comment on that, Kevin. So I appreciate your chiming in already on that. I appreciate that very much. 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. 
a brand new study out uh, or a survey, would you marry your spouse today? And two thirds in this survey said they would. But listen to this. Um, there's also some alarming insights I'll share with you. But I want to talk about this because I want to talk about you and your wife. And can you imagine yourself not being with that spouse you have after all these years? Could you imagine what it would be like? Do you want to imagine what it would be like? But can you imagine without them? Do you have somebody who loves you unconditionally? If you have a health problem that develops and you're permanently uh, disabled somehow, will they care for you? Will they be there for you or will they leave you? You know, I think um, I think a lot of people that are selfish and um, want their spouse to care for them and do all this stuff for them might be the most selfish when it would become time for them to serve the other spouse. You know what I'm saying? Like, I think a lot of people want to be served and cared for and pampered, but they wouldn't, if need be, if the shoe were on the other foot, they may not do the same for their spouse. I think we need to think about that. I think we need to think about what would we do if it happened to our spouse and we were the one holding the bag. You know what I'm saying? If they had a, a disability or if they lost their job or if they were struggling with a weight problem. Man. But um, the uh, different surveys here were quite interesting. So I'm going to share the results of that coming up next and uh, ask you the question too. Would you marry your spouse again today? After all these years, five years, 10 years, 15 years, why or why not? And I'm not going to be criticizing you here. Just be honest. Tell me whether you would remarry your spouse or you would not and why. Coming up next, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Some of the reasons why uh, some say there's no way in heck they would marry their spouse again today. Row, row. And what makes a happy marriage is also in here. There are several, several different things about what makes a happy marriage. And are you and I in these categories with our uh, spouse? I will share them with you coming up next on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. Coming up in a few minutes, as promised, a uh, whistleblower at a kid's gender clinic tells some shocking and horrifying details, honestly, of what these kids were begging, begging uh, this uh, gender clinic worker to do after they had had uh, body parts removed. I'll tell you about that in just a couple of minutes here. Uh, let's see here. I'll get to that at about 9.39 in about five minutes, okay? But right now, I want to talk a little bit more. Would you marry your spouse today? And uh, Reddit reveals, Reddit survey reveals uplifting and alarming insights. Uh, says this story by studyfinds.org. And the question I have for you is, would you marry your spouse today? Why or why not? And do not be worried. Be honest. If you uh, if you would not, then that's fine. I won't go after you. I'll just ask you why. It'll be very interesting. 800-288-WBAP is our number. 800-288-9227. So two-thirds say they would still enthusiastically marry their spouse. The reasons are growing together, being great partners and parents, and feeling lucky to have found their match. Here's some who would not... Marry their spouse today. If the uh, spouse, they said the issues that led to a no, saying, no, I don't want to, I wish I didn't marry him or her. Spouse changing for the worse over time, gaining a lot of weight, not keeping a job are some examples. Fundamental incompatibilities, general unhappiness, and a lack of connection. All right, lots of things on this. So changing for the worse over time, what you will learn if you have a good counselor or good advice that somebody's giving you, they will be telling you that you cannot control your spouse, your partner, but you can control yourself and you can control how you respond to your spouse. So you can lead by example, whether you're the wife or the husband, it doesn't matter. By holding the job. By not gaining a lot of weight, 
by not shaming your spouse if they are overweight, but by supporting them and encouraging them. I love this general unhappiness. <laughs> general unhappiness. Well, that's great. A lot of people can be generally unhappy. That's not a reason to leave your spouse. And lack of connection. Did you ever think maybe it might be your fault that there's a lack of connection? Did you ever think that maybe you're sitting on your duff expecting them to do everything for you? Clarence in Mesquite, you're on 820 AM and now 93.3 FM WBAP. Hey, Clarence. All right, man. Uh, so, yes, I'd remarry my wife. Uh, I, I was in a marriage for 25 years. It didn't work out. Not to my doing. But anyway, I married a lady that uh, was from my church. I knew her husband passed away from cancer. We've been married 14 years. And I'd do it again in a heartbeat. She is very sweet. Uh, we know that we both have our own faults. Uh, but I think if you're going to have a successful marriage, uh, you don't look at the other person and dwell on the thoughts. If you do, I think you're a narcissist. So Right. How many people are saying, well, they won't accommodate me, but are you accommodating them? Yeah, exactly. Well, and, and that's it. It's, it's a, uh, it, it's, I don't want to say a give and take, but it's a, you're right. I heard you say something a while ago, and that's the reason I called it. Uh, if your ha- your spouse has something happening, uh, a quick story, and I'll I'll shut up and get off the phone. But uh, my wife's mother and stepfather had a car accident in February. She went up to Missouri, you know, to be there, and she was there for three weeks, and uh, it didn't look good. So after a couple of weeks, I went into work and said, "Hey, I got to go do it with my wife. Sorry, do what you need to, but." You know, I'm taking the time off. And uh, I showed up there, and I was glad I did, because it was uh, it didn't end well for either one of them. So, but it, that's, that's what it's all about, is it, that's your partner. You're supposed to be there. And, you know, to say that, uh, you know, like this, this person is, you know, um, is uh, has changed this person is this way or this person is that um i wouldn't insult your intelligence or your judgment by marrying them to begin with you know you're you're, you're insulting you're insulting your own judgment i chose to marry this person but sure. there there's something wrong with them well what do you mean you put you picked them nobody made you nobody yeah. held a gun to your head yes i totally agree so then how about we realize maybe there's something wrong with us or maybe yeah. we can change exactly after seven years of going through rough patches and having to work on our marriage, we've come out so much farther ahead. Uh, we're light years ahead because we dealt with it and we didn't ignore it. And I didn't sit on my duff. Uh, divorce is not a word we use in our home, and divorce is not something that's uh, that's uh, an option for well, me. Well, trust me, it wasn't for me either. Well, let me uh, ask you this: How many people do you think divorce uh, and uh, keep thinking it's going to be better, but it doesn't? It, it oftentimes it never is better, is it? Do you think with most people? I can tell you for a fact. Uh, this doesn't get out, but well, no, I'm saying I'm thinking about the person initiating. I'm, what I'm saying is the person initiating. You didn't initiate okay. it. I'm saying the person that initiates it. Oftentimes, they go to the next one. It's not going to be better, is it? No, no, and I, I can tell you that's the case. How so? That, well, because there's been several different people and it's not ever worked out for her. from your and first spouse right she left you thinking yeah. she would could do better or whatever and yep. and she how many has she turned through since then oh i don't know i i would even i, I don't want to go there but no and that's healthy i didn't mean to be negative on her. it's just by saying that you can keep yeah. changing spouses but the problem may be you and until you acknowledge well, that and look at that and i can tell you what i said up front my wife was from my church. My kids knew her, that kind of thing. So anyway, yeah. uh, I think that's, that is the cornerstone. Am I not right? Well, I tell you what, congratulations is what I want to say on 14 years, and here's to another 14, right? Oh, yeah. Well, I'm, <laughs> I'm 64, so we're enjoying every day together as long as we have. Wow, don't so. you say so you won't get another 14 because that's, that's, uh, that's not even Joe Biden's age yet. Clarence, I appreciate oh. your call. 
Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I listen every night, by the way. Thank you, brother. I appreciate that very much. Uh, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. So um, the question is, can you imagine life without your spouse? And uh, would you marry your spouse again today? 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227. Here's some of the other folks that say they would not. No way in hell, one person said. Been married 18 years. I knew if I knew he was going to need me to be his mother and fail to de- keep a decent job and gain 100 pounds, I would have run for the hills. Well, you're being honest, but you shouldn't dwell on that, should you? Why don't you encourage your husband to get a job? Why don't you uh, tell your husband gently, yeah, yeah, I feel like I'm your mother. Um, I'll help you with some things, but really some of the stuff you're going to need to figure out, you know. But you, but this is an attitude of you're fat, you can't keep a job, and I'm not your mom. I think that there's always a way to work on things. It certainly sounds bad right there, that woman described, but there's always a way to work on things. You have to want to. You have to want to. What if you gained 100 pounds? Would you want your spouse to leave you? Producer Garrett, you're my producer. What if you gained 100 pounds? Would you want me to leave you and not have him as my producer? No. I hope you wouldn't kick me off as your host if I gained 100 pounds, sir. <laughs> yeah, yes, he hopes I would get him on soda weight loss. <laughs> One of my sponsors, exactly. Uh, Another one says, my husband and I have been married for 10 years this year. We had a very rough couple of years around the seven-year mark. If I got a chance, a second chance, I probably wouldn't. Wow. I'd rather stay single. Do you know that people that are married, the statistics have been so clear in so many research projects we've talked about or uh, research that's been done over the years, including recently, people that are married are happier. And here's a few other little tidbits. What makes happy a happy marriage? Having a joint bank account. Dude, it's a red flag if you have separate bank accounts. Couples who share money entirely argue less about finances. That's exactly right. That is exactly right. Her bank account is mine. My job is her job, etc. It's all our money in one pot. And if you think differently, I strongly disagree with that. And I think there's an issue with that. Um, be optimistic and supportive. Researchers say having a positive and supporting partner can yield greater happiness and health for both. Okay, we're going to talk to Chris in Fort Worth, who says he's happily married coming up next. Oh, splitting the chores is also mentioned in here. Equal power, relationship maintenance, or as Dr. Feel would say, relationship rescue. All right, we're going to continue on with this coming up next. And then we get into horrifying things at a kid's gender clinic. The whistleblower comes forward and tells of all people, Dr. Phil, Dr. Phil. Uh, that they begged him to, they begged this person that was at the gender clinic to do this. And unfortunately, that person couldn't help him with it. It was too late. All that's coming up next on the Chris Crock Show. 800 288 WBAP is our number, 800 288 9227 on News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. News Talk 820 WBAP, now on FM at 93.3. Make it a preset. 800 288 WBAP, 800 288 9227. Would you marry your spouse today? Why or why not? And by the way, there'll be no, I won't criticize you here. Uh, just be honest. 800-288-WBAP. Hey, also, WBAP is now on your FM dial in crystal clear FM signal at 93.3. Make it a preset, y'all. Okay. Um, what makes a happy marriage? When spouses focus on disagreements that can truly be resolved, they're likely to stay together. That's right. Focus on what we can change and try to overlook and seek out help from others that are healthy with ones that you cannot see to eye to eye and to help you. Somebody that gives good and uh, proper wisdom. Uh, here's one lady that says, I wouldn't marry him again. No, he's the same person I married. The person I married... He's not the same person I married. The person I married took care of himself and didn't need to be told what to do. He was my partner when I was seven months pregnant. He quit his job, leaving everything to me. I had to go back to work for two weeks after a C-section to keep us afloat. After that, he needs to be told what to do, and I feel like his mother. If I knew what I know now, absolutely not. We have been married five years, and we are in our 30s. Okay. Well, um, in that case, I would suggest getting... Uh, help outside of the marriage from a licensed professional counselor. 
and from people that care about you and love you and uh, seek to uh, keep you in your marriage. People that are uh, are going to give you stuff, uh, wisdom that you don't might not want to hear, but to keep you together and to grow your relationship. Remember, I'll say it again and again, you cannot change your partner, but you can change yourself. You can change your response. Let me tell you something. I went through seven years in a lot of bad situations and we came out way ahead, better than ever before, ever before. And if I can do it, you can do it. You can do it. Now, uh, let's see here. Who are we going to? Okay, we're going to go to Chris in Fort Worth. You're on uh, 820 AM now, 93.3 FM WBAP. Hey, Chris. Hey, how you doing tonight? Good, how are you? I'm just happy to be here, man. Hey, I'm uh, I'm going to give you something you're never going to believe. Mm-hmm. I'm 75 years old. I've been married to the same woman for 53 years. I believe it, and I'm proud of you. I think that's fantastic. Is it is it uh, good? Is it still going good? Oh, it's the best. But see, the bottom line of it is I married my best friend, and we're in business together. We work together every day. I have friends of mine that say, have you lost your yeah, mind? Yes, I, I'm thinking that right now. Well, they don't know my wife, but, you know, I married a person who's very understanding but very opinionated. I don't have to worry about what she's thinking. But the bottom line of it is we work together on everything. I mean everything, whether it's in business or it's our family life. Do you think it's okay or, to not work with your wife on business and everything if she she is more comfortable not doing that, like doing something else? Right. Absolutely. Okay. But I've been fortunate. I'm lucky. And I told her when we started business together in 1987, I said, okay, here's the deal. I get to die first. That's what we all die, want. I'm in, That's I'm right. In big Me trouble. too. I'm with you, big. Chris. I'll be calling you. Uh, appreciate your call, man. Thank you. 800-288-WBAP is our number. Tom and Burleson, you're on 820 AM now, 93.3 FM WBAP. Hey, how are we doing tonight, man? Good, how are you? Uh, just, I'm just peachy, as I like to say. Beautiful night out, and uh, working uh, a little, still a little working, but not for much longer. But listen, I'm telling you, if you've got a great wife, there's nothing better. There really isn't. I can't imagine my life without my wife. And why is that? Uh, we're two peas in a pod. We, I, we think the same thoughts just about uh, we our differences are uh, as far as uh, likes and dislikes are so in can uh, i can't say it in, in yeah in, in, in incompatible yeah. or uh no, no. inseparable no, no. or in no 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 it, uh, i'm i'm saying the wrong different whatever they're, uh, they're, whatever not indifferent. no no so you're still going the wrong they're direction. the same <laughs> Where Similar. our likes and dislikes are so close together that there's hardly any difference. Okay. It's interesting because uh, as my wife and I have been together for years, she becomes more like me, which is pretty annoying because two of me in the room is, <laughs> two of me in the room is a, it's not a good situation. So then I have to start well, then, being quiet and letting her be me. And I'm right. like, okay, I guess she stole my identity. Now I have nothing. I'm just going to hit. I'm going to just be well, a professional victim. 18, we've been together for 18 years. I'm 68 and she's, she'll be 50 in June. Well, that's why you're happy. She's 50 years old. You're 18 years older. They're get out of here. You're cheating, Tom. <laughs> Appreciate your call. Get out of here. All right, Ronnie and Dallas, we'll talk to you coming up next. Uh, what makes, you, What makes? Uh, I should say, would you marry your spouse again today? Why or why not? And if the answer is no, that's fine. No criticisms here. It'll be interesting to talk to you about that. Uh, continuing on uh, what things make a happy marriage. I've got more of a list here in the research they have. And then we'll get into the Kids Gender Clinic whistleblower telling Dr. Phil that these pe- these patients begged to have this taken care of for them, but it was too late. That's next on the Chris Crock Show on News Talk 820 WBAP. Now on FM at 93.3, 800-288-WBAP is our number, 800-288-9227.